I'm here in Bodega Bay where Alfred Hitchcock filmed The Birds in 1962. Birds just don't go around attacking people without no reason. All at once, the birds were everywhere. Welcome to another episode of Hidden Hollywood. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and follow us on social media at Dark Pinup, Travis Monroe, and Vintage Shit Posting. Alfred Hitchcock chose this area for many reasons. First, the original story took place uh, probably around the early 1900s in Cornwall, which is an ocean area of England. However, it was supposed to be poor peasants. It was supposed to be something very unrelatable to modern audiences. Hitchcock wanted the audience to feel like they could insert themselves into those people's lives and into this town. Also, if you could note, the, the sky is so much of the plane here of the horizon. Yes, there's ocean, but this isn't sunny day at Malibu eating an ice cream cone surfing. That's not Hitchcock style at all. But another reason he did this is because this open horizon skyline and colors was perfect for the movie matching they were making, movie magic that they were making. Hitchcock was inspired by a novella later renamed The Birds by English author Daphne du Maurier. This was the third time Hitchcock bought the rights to something by du Maurier. He did it first with Jamaica Inn in 1939 and with the film Rebecca in 1940. He hired screenwriter Evan Hunter and told them they were only keeping the name of the short story and the concept of the attacking birds. Approaching a project and not fully knowing what was happening is something Hitchcock did quite a lot. And what he would do is he would go to those film locations and start developing the story and plan it out picture perfect in his head. So by the time they were ready for the production with actors and everything, he already knew exactly how the story would look and exactly what it was going to be. After defining the principal elements of the story, the screenwriter proposed to have Grace Kelly as Melanie and Cary Grant as Mitch Brenner. Hitchcock agreed that would be great, but there's a problem. Grace was retired from Hollywood as she was busy being the Princess of Monaco. So Hitchcock wanted the birds to be the only star on screen. And that was the reason why he cast Tippi Hedren in the main role. So Tippi at the time was an unknown actress and she actually spent a lot of her time doing commercials and modeling and she was actually struggling in those worlds. So she moved to LA and she was contacted by Universal executives. So after many screen tests, she finally got the role, but she didn't even know exactly what she was auditioning for. So the production invested $200,000 in mechanical birds and that didn't quite work as planned. They were too stiff, they just looked weird. So after that, they decided they were going to train real birds. Hitchcock's team worked for six months prior to the first filming date just to get the birds right. They would actually go to old garbage dumps and they would just record all different types of species of birds. They would throw food out and they would just get tons of shots and b-roll and see how they worked and lived. They ended up using 3,200 real birds. So the next challenge was figuring out how to shoot those scenes where the actors were attacked by the birds. Of course, on set, working with live animals, there was a lot of issues. Some of the birds would attack people out of nowhere. On the first day of training, 13 crew members were hospitalized after severe injuries. The crew realized that the best way to have trained ravens was to get eggs and raise them from birth. This right here is where, um the scene was shot where they were running down the road when the kids, the first bird attack happens. However, that wasn't actually shot here on location. So they did of course shoot the facade of the school, the kids outside of it, but the actual first bird attack happened when they were on set in a studio in Hollywood and they were running on a treadmill and they had, they had these people with these long leather gloves who were the bird trainers. They were inside a cage on set so the birds wouldn't go into the rafters or anything like that. And then these poor kids, um, I don't think they did real life birds with the kids very much at all, but they still had to use a little bit to kind of fake you out and make you think that they are all real birds. But they'd have these long leather gloves inside of this huge cage they built over the set on a treadmill. And they're throwing these birds uh, intermixed with animatronics, robots, fakes, CGI later, everything else. And the kids are running, screaming, getting attacked. That all the kids that day said, it was fine running and pretending to be chased by birds. It was fine running on the treadmill. But the worst part is the first person to go down, it's over because the second you drop, the birds are, like the real birds are gonna come for you because you're the easiest one to get at. And birds will naturally come towards people's eyes. So that's why you see them ducking their head, that is real. But yeah, all the kids would say to themselves, like whoever goes down, the first person to drop, you're done for. So they were running for their lives. They were truly like, the, the terror you see on screen and the screaming and the chaos, Hitchcock, that's real. This is the school. 
Uh, we're coming up on it right now. It's Potter School. It's now a private residence, so I am going to be a bit quiet here just to be a little more polite. I think people are inside. It's located right next to the church. In the film, you didn't see that. This, they came in, the camera crew, and they put the jungle gym, the bench where Tippi Hedren sits on, actually, uh, on, and made like a giant recess area, um, which is no longer here anymore. It's, it's gated. So there's a sign here, and it does say that this facade of this school, it was built in 1872, but it turns out that after 1872, up until the Hitchcock crew found this, it wasn't a working school anymore. So they put a bit of a facade in the inside. Some of those scenes were actually filmed at a Hollywood studio, but they redid the set, they did the jungle gym, they, put, uh, they took out the church just for those shots. And actually up until 1966, it was completely abandoned. This was not a school, it was not a private residence, nothing. It was abandoned after the film crew had just you know, made it look presentable for the film. But then three generations of private families have lived here. Bodega Bay was a place very close by, about 45 minutes away, where Shadow of a Doubt was filmed in the early 1940s. So almost 20 years earlier, this area had been loved by Hitchcock. He wanted to go to the ocean in between filming for Shadow of a Doubt. Bodega Bay had been on his list of places. So Hitchcock and cast and crew members were living in a hotel in uh, mainly one hotel that was in Santa Rosa, about 45 minutes away. They also had equipment and a few other people staying in Bodega Bay itself. They really came into Bodega Bay, swarmed in for two months, swarmed out. Now there was tons of pre-production time spent. I mean, Hitchcock is one of those directors where when the camera starts rolling, the film's done in his mind. It's done on production board. It's done in almost every aspect. He just needs the images. Uh, if you look up on the original church here too, there's actually a crow watching on the crucifix. <laughs> He's circling me. I swear he's circling me. I feel like nobody ever comes here and they're like, why are you here? What are you doing? This is our area. Which is also really weird because ravens and crows are not indigenous to this area at all. So, but anyway, um, <laughs> this right here is a church that was used in Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. It was only shown very briefly and actually right behind it is the Potter School. But with Hitchcock magic, you didn't see that vicinity at all. It didn't look like they were so close. We're actually not in Bodega Bay where most of this was shot. Now Hitchcock made it look like they were close to the ocean, but they weren't at all. We're about three miles north or inland of Bodega Bay. And this is just called a small town of Bodega. And if you turn a little bit over here and look at this small tiny town, there's just a couple shops, but the casino restaurant right there is where cast and crew would actually go to eat meals. But it's there is no ocean over here. This is not Bodega Bay. And if you turn over here, there's no ocean. It's gorgeous, but with Hitchcock movie magic, they made the town of Bodega Bay be something that was an idyllic, fake town and yet something that mimicked so many small towns in America at that time. This area looks almost nothing like the film because Hitchcock was doing something that many people had not done. He was merging animatronics with CGI with live action shots such as explosions and fires and yet he was mirroring different uh, images with almost 30 different types of shots and oil paintings. Hitchcock said, in order to get the photography of the birds in the air, we need an area with low land, not high mountains or a lot of trees. In a pictorial sense, it was vital having nothing on the ground but sand so that they had the entire sky to play with in post-production. At this point in history, CGI was far from being a real thing, but there was one technical development named matte technique. So the matte technique consists in superimposing or combining two images into a single image. It was different from the blue screen that was usually used. So for example, the matte technique gave a more realistic impression and it required a more complex logistic. Hitchcock himself even said the final part of the film where they get into the car safely and drive away and the view that you see is one of the hardest endings he ever had to make because of the composition and what they were doing for that film magic. Something else that a lot of people don't know is that Alfred Hitchcock worked with uh, Imagineers from Disney to do the birds animatronics and some of the special effects. There is a relationship between Hitchcock and Disney that's so interesting. Because of the work on the birds, 
they were actually able to pioneer animatronics and they used Disney Imagineers to help Hitchcock with this. So they were finally able to pioneer great work in animatronics that you see in the park today. Disneyland opened the Enchanted Tiki Room, which, if you remember, has tons of birds and puppetry and animatronics. This is the Thai's restaurant used in many scenes of the film. It's still operating in Bodega Bay today. A few decades after filming, the original restaurant burned down. When it was rebuilt, they added a gift shop, extended the building, and a larger seafood market. It looks nothing like the film, though. One thing I did note while being inside is that there was actually no merchandise at all for Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds. Okay, I know that not everyone's here for Alfred Hitchcock. I know there that this town has a whole history of its own, but not one postcard. I need some merch. I need Birds merch. While we're at this location, Hitchcock did film many scenes directly across from here. On the other side of this road, the telephone booth bird attack and the gas station explosion was filmed. A modern day gas station is now in its place. Beyond that lies the Tides Inn and some apartments. That area did house a few crew members and acted as storage for their equipment. Of course, when talking about the birds, we do have to talk about Tippi Hedren's experience with Alfred Hitchcock on set. There's been a lot of articles coming out and interviews with Tippi herself talking about the famous attic scene. Tippi was told they were going to use mechanical birds for the attack that happens to her at the end of the movie. On the day of filming that scene, Tippi said, the whole backstage crew was acting very odd. One of them came into her dressing room and looked ghostly white. She kept asking him what was wrong, and he finally said, we're using real birds. She later said that Hitchcock was in his office all morning long, avoiding being on set because he knew what was about to happen. It took seven days of shooting with live birds, while Tippy at times was strapped down to the floor, being attacked by real birds. It was absolutely chaotic and it would never, never fly today. Tippy was pushed to a point where the fear and exhaustion you see on camera is not fake, it's real. So this wouldn't be the only time Hitchcock abused Tippy. If you're interested in knowing more about that relationship and the odd relationship Hitchcock had with the blondes, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely make a video on that subject. The film was done and released on March 28th, 1963. It was received with mixed reviews and even the ones that praised the film contained a few critics. Despite that, the film was quite a success in the box office. Not as good as Psycho, but it was good. So why was a classic like The Birds received in such a harsh way? Well, first, the expectations were way too high after Psycho. Hitchcock felt the pressure of topping his last performance, and no matter the outcome of the film, the dissatisfaction was going to be there. Psycho is peak horror, and that film redefined the horror genre and created a whole new wave of horror films. The general public also felt dissatisfied with The Birds because of the end of the movie. Hitchcock's movies have that element that pulls all the pieces together and gives a reason to the problems. So The Birds didn't really have that. And people kept thinking, did they forget to make an ending? Why does it end this way? But Hitchcock believed that by not giving a reason to why the birds began attacking people, it made the whole thing even more terrifying. It was also a semi-apocalyptic idea of nature rebelling against their worst creation, humans. It's said that Hitchcock was also inspired by early World War I and World War II bombings and air raids that happened in England. Complete chaos with almost no explanation for such loss of humanity. Another cause of discomfort was that the film didn't have the end written on it. So when they saw the car disappearing into the horizon and the screen fading to black, everyone thought that there was a problem with the projectors or something. There were people seriously going up to movie theater managers and asking for their money back because they thought that there was a problem with the ending and that it was never shown. There is no worse feeling than uncertainty of not knowing what's going to happen or why there's no justification for total chaos. We can definitely relate to that feeling, especially during this pandemic. So this was our little video about the making of the birds. If you like this video and would like to know more about other classics, please leave a comment and we will read them all and get back to you. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification so we can keep making videos in the future. This also won't be our last episode on Alfred Hitchcock. We do have a collab coming up about Hitchcock's world in San Francisco. As soon as that video is out, I will link it right here. That was beautifully put. In fact, after hearing that, there's nothing more I wish to add. So, good night until next week.